Hello folks and welcome to this weather topic video. Collectively, this entire thing I'm going to be going over is known as Project Storm Fury. Project Storm Fury encapsulates not only Storm Fury itself, but also, also Project Cirrus and Project Baton. Uh, we will distinguish those two when, of course, we get to them. So, what is Storm Fury? Storm Fury's mission was to weaken or dissipate storms quicker, both tropical and non-tropical systems, faster than what would happen naturally through man-made seeding. Within the uh, category of normal storms, not normal low pressures, normal storms, so just a single cell, the idea is to seed it with either dry ice or later on silver iodide, this would cause an increase in the amount of material for accretion of water vapor, or ice, or supercooled water, doesn't really matter here, which would indeed theoretically cause an increase in precipitation, however, over a much shorter time span, almost like a downburst, which would be fine if it's over a completely undeveloped area. If it's over farmland, then you're dealing with destroying someone's crop, most likely, but ah, who cares? This would, th this increase in precipitation over a shorter time span would essentially, in theory again, cause the storm to rain itself out as the one thing in the acronym of SLAM that cannot be overcome by another thing is moisture. Shear can be replaced with sufficient lift and, and instability. Instability can be overcome by excessive amounts of lift and shear, but moisture is the one thing that cannot be replaced. Moisture, water vapor, ice is the one thing that makes up clouds. So if you get rid of that, you are eliminating the storm and any potential for a storm to form at all. So that's pretty much the goal, to have storms be to, to have storms die faster i'll say that i was trying to find the right words now within a hurricane we are talking about the extremely complex dynamics of an entire low pressure system not to say that a single thunderstorm cell isn't complex enough because it is the idea around hurricanes is to specifically seed the eye wall and around it not the not the direct center this would cause latent heat to be released, essentially, again, through very complex dynamics and interactions, cause a new eye wall to form, which would weaken the first innermost eye wall, and this would then weaken the storm as you have now weakened the very core structure of the storm and then it being replaced. If that sounds familiar, good for you. That is the Iowa replacement cycle, which we will definitely loop back to. Note that the damage potential of wind as a whole is a square of the wind speed. Especially if you were to math it out, you would get an exponential looking graph. You know, kind of like how, you know, like 10, like 10 squared, 10 cubed, 10 to the fourth and so on and so forth with different wind speeds compared to a the first one that you're measuring. Anyway, on to our history. The first seeding happened in 1946 on December 1st. My cat caught a mouse, toy mouse, good girl, causing a snowstorm in the Berkshire Mountains. I believe that's in the Appalachians. Yes, I am purposely mispronunciating that. In 1947, in October, Project Cirrus was established. Earlier in 47, in October, they seeded the 1947 Florida Georgia hurricane. The results of this were utterly horrible. They were absolutely abysmal. And we will go more in depth about every hurricane that was seeded after we're done with our history here. Cirrus was canceled from the Florida Georgia hurricane seeding and lawsuits would actually happen and even be acted upon with many more threatened. Anyway, 
1955, the NHRP, National Hurricane Research Project, was established. This uh, project would oversee what would become Storm Fury. <clears throat> Pardon me. In 1958, Daisy was seeded as a test of silver iodide equipment, and this was a failure. We'll go into that again more later on. In 1961, Esther was seeded twice, and results were actually fairly solid. The next year, Project Storm Fury is officially established as a joint venture between the Department of Commerce, of all things, and the United States Navy. Storm Fury had guidelines, though. These three, they are all very important. Number one, it must the target must have a less than 10% chance to landfall within 24 hours, so avoiding a repeat of the Florida Georgia hurricane. Number two, easily the most important, it has to be within aircraft range. Number three, it has to be a fairly intense system, presumably category two or above, with a well-formed eye. We are going after the eye wall after all. And fourth most is that in 62, Project Baton was done. This was a project testing silver iodide on regular thunderstorm cells during the American Southwest monsoon season in 62 from July through August. Results were actually pretty good, though. So these three guidelines, again, the most important of which is that it has to be within an aircraft range, were meant to keep targets scarce. After all, this is going to be costing a fair bit of money. Where else are you going to get all the equipment from? Stealing it, obviously. <clears throat> and we would see the next year that Balua would be seated in 1963. Two years later, miscommunications happened with Hurricane Betsy plans to seed the storm. Betsy was never seated, which, by the way, took two months of the NHRP to convince Congress, nah, uh we didn't seed Betsy. The, the NHRP was literally just going, nah, uh And Congress was like, are you sure? And NHRP was like, yeah, huh? I'm sure they had a lot of fun with Congress doing that. There would be no seedings until 69, 1969, don't get weird, where Hurricane Debbie was seeded for two days in August. The last seeding to happen from Storm Fury happened in 1971, its target being Hurricane Ginger. It was just around this time, presumably right uh, soon after Ginger's uh, seeding, that the United States Navy withdrew from Project Storm Fury. All I got was the early 70s, unfortunately. I did not get a specific year. I really tried to find a specific year. And after the United States Navy withdrew, there was a quiet reshifting to understanding hurricanes rather than anything else. This already happens, and still happens to this day, with reconnaissance flights into hurricanes and tropical storms. However, it was really here where we learned a whole lot of, of course, what we now know today. Storm Fury was very quietly ended in 1983, with most of the results being failures, more or less, with, don't get me wrong, some success. Our first uh, results happened with the 47 Florida Georgia hurricane. Like I said, we would get there when we get there, and we're here. Hi, we're here. The Florida Georgia hurricane was seeded with 180 pounds, that's what, like 58 kilos, of dry ice on the 13th of October, with minor immediate results, if any at all, to be honest. Results were very inconclusive. Some wind speed changes were found. They were indeed a little bit lower, but due to the natural variation of hurricanes, again, these are very complex systems, it is mostly undetermined if the seeding had any effects at all. Now, as we can see, right around the yellow circle that I put here is where the 
Storm was seated. Now the problem comes in when this thing reversed course, it was going out to sea, then headed back towards land. Landfall is a Category 2 system. Lawsuits were actually acted upon due to one of the team's uh, men, Mr. Langmar's statements. You would not believe what he said. He said that the seeding attempt caused the storm to move towards land. Which is, number one, physically impossible to ever have happen. Number two, why would you say that? Why in the world would he say this? I don't know. He's dead. I, I'm not able to ask him. I can ask his skull. I'm not going to get any answers. They're, they're, they're kind of bone dry there. Lawsuit, again, lawsuits were enacted, and the threats of further lawsuits and of the current and of the one that actually happened was only settled after proof of a storm in 1906 that had a very similar path, proving that, yeah, there were actually no way that the seeding caused it to change course. This set back the entire project by 11 years. Well, first of all, Cirrus was straight up canceled after this because of, number one, this man's statements and what happened. Minor results, bad statements, the, the whole works. The government even denied that they seeded this hurricane until 1965, which doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not the United States government. So this was obviously a failure. With practically no results, the storm managed to strengthen after the seeding as well, which is something that we don't want to have happen. So... Definitely a very, very rough start. Possibly one of the worst starts you can ever have to a project. But regardless, we're moving on to Hurricane Daisy, which was seeded in 1958, obviously when it happened. Hurricane Daisy, again, its attempts of seeding were really just tests for the silver iodide uh, dispersal equipment. Problem though, it only worked once. The whole thing was that, hey, you know, we have a target of opportunity, might as well see if our stuff works, and then if it does work, let's see if we can record any data. There was no conclusive data because it only worked once. Again, this was not wholly a modification attempt, and I still am counting it here because this does classify as a seeding, even though, again, not a modification attempt. Again, to weaken... A storm conspiracy theorists and not to strengthen one. So obviously from the no conclusive data and the equipment only working once, this test was a failure. Thankfully they got their equipment to work after this with 1961's Esther. Esther was seated on the 16th of September where the winds would see to be weakened by around 10% which may not seem like a lot, but it, it really is. There would be two more attempts to seed the eye wall. However, these would miss. This attempt is called a success and pretty much directly led to Project Storm Fury's creation. I am going to dispute this, though. Number one, um, it strengthened after the seeding. Number two, it was kind of off. You know, we only had one attempt that worked, and we're calling that a success with two that didn't succeed. So um, that's a one to two ratio there. Sorry, one to three with all of them combined. So not looking too great, but again... I'm not the United States government. Two years later, Hurricane Balil was seeded on the 23rd and 24th of August, once again with silver iodide. The first seeding missed its mark, not hitting the eye wall. However, the second did hit the mark, and they saw winds go down by 20%, which is two times more than what they saw with Esther. That's pretty significant. Even the 10% is significant. 20% we're, we're definitely getting somewhere. So, 
now, according to the data here, the results were inconclusive but promising. So you didn't see that. So overall, you know, that's that's we're we're on the right track. We're we're on the right track. Things are going a lot better than with Project Surus. So let's keep on going. Well, they did. It took a while, but they did with Hurricane Debbie in 1969, seated on the 18th and 20th of August. On the first day, winds were seen to go down by a whopping 31%, and on day two, by 18%. That is very promising. 13 aircraft were involved, and due to the very promising results, like I just said, this was determined to be a success, and I would have to agree here. Problem though, we realized that we needed nearly hourly seatings for this to really work. And as you can see, after the seating stopped, Debbie ramped back up to a category three, which it likely could have reached before the seating to be fair. So we at least prevented it from reaching possibly category four. That's for, that's, that's for alternate history to decide. Again, though, pretty good success. Now, what happened with Hurricane Ginger? Well, Hurricane Ginger, uh, it had no significant eye structure, which means that upon the seeding attempt, it had no effect. The storm was overall way too diffuse. Again, did not have a cohesive eye structure, so this was a failure. After all, again, we are looking to target the eye wall. If you don't have a well-formed eye wall, you're not really going to be able to do much. You know, you can't form a new eye wall when there's not really one there, you know. So, like I said, uh, after the U.S. Navy withdrew its funding, plans were made to possibly take it elsewhere, actually. Plans for the East Pacific Basin never fully materialized. Personally, I actually think this would have been the best option for Storm Fury as the only land, the only inhabited land out there in the West Pacific Basin is Hawaii. And Hawaii, over the course of over 70 years of reliable recording now, has really been hit less than, if I'm not mistaken, 30 times. Which is, granted, 30 times is a lot, yes, but over the course of 70 years, that's not a lot. So, Project Storm Fury would have probably really benefited from the East Pacific, especially because the East Pacific can also cause some very rapid intensification, and you could see if that if the seedings could stop that. But again, plans never materialized. Plans resurfaced in 1976, this time offered to the West Pacific Basin, where hurricanes are called typhoons. Japan accepted the offer, saying that they, were, they would be very interested to see results. China, however, declined. China, at, at the time, being led by Mao Zedong, um, he said that there would be consequences if any seeded storm made landfall on China. See, China, the problem here is that you're literally 30 years behind. We already went over this in 1947. I know that China probably wasn't listening at the time, but still, China proving, the Chinese government proving that they are 30 years behind as always. Plans for the Australian Basin also fell through. This is partially, this might partially be due, this is me speculating, due to the fact that many storms hit Australia very early in their life, more or less, uh, due to the Southern Hemisphere and uh, storms going the opposite way. So instead of curving so instead of starting east, moving west, and then curving north and then to the northeast, storms start in the north, uh, curve west, southwest, south, and then southeast. When, and 
when you have Australia in the middle of a hurricane's path, it's going to happen fairly often. Again, that's speculation, but I think that might be part of the reason why. They might have also not been interested, either. Now, very interestingly, after Storm Fury concluded, Castro, yes, the Fidel Castro, said that Storm Fury was an attempt to weaponize hurricanes. So we see two dictators not knowing what they're talking about, first of all, and second of all, making literally the complete opposites of facts. Just like, like straight up just saying, yeah, they're weaponizing hurricanes. No, we're trying to weaken them. We are doing the exact opposite. This is what conspiracy theories do. They go for the exact opposite only because they have tiny minor proofs that don't work large scale. Chemtrails are not a thing. Conspiracy theorists who think of chemtrails do not know about cirrus clouds and how they form. Cirrus clouds are made of ice and stay in the sky for hours. Y'all are insane and stupid. Anyway. Storm Fury, after moving to Understanding Storms, really discovered or really proved the Iowa replacement cycle. So we had a ton of knowledge gained about hurricanes and how their dynamics work, thank goodness. Now, of course, I won't have to bash Storm Fury here. Number one, the Iowa replacement cycle happens naturally. This is a confirmed thing. In part, thanks to Storm Fury. We really saw this with Hurricane Allen of 1980, the only 190 mile per hour hurricane in the Atlantic. Uh, uh, Patricia in, in 2015 went to 215. Anyway, we also were really able to confirm multiple eye walls can also happen naturally, which means that the whole basis of Storm Fury happens naturally. Which also means that you can't really conclude if we were just lucky with the timing going, oh, you know, uh, the random insert storm name here weakened because of us and not because of something that happened naturally. So there's that kind of really big error. Also, the fact that the ice and supercooled water don't play as much of a part as we originally thought. Ice and supercooled water play a very interesting part in both regular thunderstorm cells and hurricanes, but not to what we thought, not what we thought would happen with them. A little bit too complex for me to go into here. Um, just know that it is actually kind of interesting, kind of a little boring, kind of interesting, a little bit of both. So what did Storm Fury find? Again, we proved multiple eye walls can exist at once. We proved the eye wall replacement cycle. And we really helped, under, uh, helped ourselves understand the dynamics of the eye wall with all of these flights into them, which is huge. That is so huge, legitimately. It is so important that Storm Fury be remembered for the amount of knowledge that we gained from it. Storm Fury flew under my radar for a while, and really going into this is was really, really cool. Granted, most of the information I got from for this video was indeed from Wikipedia. However, I can guarantee you that every single source that Wikipedia has for, for Project Storm Fury is a reliable one by the NWS, by the NOAA. And they know what they're talking about when it comes to weather. I hope. Not that I hope. I know they do. So with that being said, folks, that, I, that is all that I have for Project Storm Fury. I hope that you learned something in this video. Again, I certainly did while researching. Thank you all so much for watching.